Sir Keir has vehemently rejected suggestions that he is plotting a war on Middle Britain. Sir Keir Starmer has been accused of lying not once but twice over Labour's tax plans just days before Chancellor Rachel Reeves delivers her budget next week. Tory leadership contender Robert Jenrick, who is vying with Kemi Badenoch in the campaign's final few days, launched his broadside as the PM denied misleading the public during the general election over proposed tax changes. Labour's manifesto had pledged not to raise taxes on working people, specifically ruling out rises in VAT, national insurance, and income tax. However, speculation is rife that those with asset-based income could see increased tax burdens. Mr Jenrick, speaking to the Henry Jackson Society in London on Friday evening, said, Sir Keir has lied not once but twice by claiming not to have breached his manifesto promises on tax and by insisting that his budget will not be an assault on the heartlands of Middle Britain. Nobody voted for Rachel Reeves' raid on working people. This is a political choice and we must fight it. It turns out Labour's election manifesto was another dodgy dossier. They lied to the British people through their teeth. Speaking yesterday on the last day of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, CHOGM, in Samoa, the Prime Minister was asked to define working people. He said it referred to someone who goes out and earns their living, usually paid through a monthly check, and not someone who can write a check to get out of difficulties. Denying he was plotting a war on Middle Britain, Sir Keir continued, What we're doing in the budget is twofold. The first part is laying strong foundations, addressing the financial situation we've inherited, including a £22 billion deficit. We have to deal with that. Previous leaders have sidestepped these issues, creating fictions, but I'm not prepared to do that. When asked whether the Labour manifesto had misled the public, as suggested by Mr Jenrick, Sir Keir insisted, no, we were transparent about the tax increases that would be necessary, regardless of circumstances, as you've mentioned. I reiterated this many times during the